Hello everyone, today we're going to discuss another subject of debunking anti-communist. With that, I'll turn the subject to my grandson Tristan. Go ahead, Tristan. All right, thank you. So as my grandfather just said, today I want to address the next topic, the next arguments that we're going to be introducing in our debunking anti-communism series. Now, the argument that I want to talk about today is a pretty common one. I'm sure you've heard it. But it is the argument that, you know, you're a communist, but you live in capital society, you consume products produced by capitalism, doesn't that make you a hypocrite then? If you're a communist and you live in capitalist society and you participate in capitalism? And I want to kind of deconstruct this argument and debunk it today. That's my goal. Now, in my view, the main flaw with this argument is that it's kind of some kind of uh, makes labor and capital uh, synonymous with each other, capitalist system and labor synonymous with each other. So capitalism didn't actually create the products that you consume on a daily basis, right? Labor did. The only thing that capitalism does is it directs that labor and it directs who the profit of that labor is supposed to go to. And it directs uh, who controls the means of production used by the laborers in order to produce the products that the consumer is uh, consuming or buying, right? right? So it kind of conflates capitalism and labor together. And under, you know, socialist society, uh, labor would still exist. You know, labor isn't a thing that is, you know, only existent under capitalist society. Labor existed under feudalism. It existed under every stage of society that we've seen so far. Labor has existed under every stage of society. It's not something unique to capitalism. And labor would also exist under socialism, right? So, it kind of views, the, the main flaw with his argument is that it views uh, consumption of products as a thing that is inherent to capitalism and unique to capitalism, but it would be universal across pretty much all economic systems and all types of government. Now, another flaw with this argument that I want to bring up, it's not too much of a, it's not, you know, a, a big flaw, but I do want to address it because it's kind of funny to me. Um, if somebody asks, tells you this argument, all you have to do to refute it is just ask them, would you say the same thing to somebody living under feudalist society? That is, would you say to somebody that's living under feudalism, that's, you know, that person is saying, oh, I don't like feudalism, you know, um, I think, you know, the system of feudalism ought to be abolished. If you if you were to say to somebody, would, would you say to someone that's being exploited under the system of feudalism, oh, well, you live in feudalism, you work on the land provided by your, uh, provided by your um, lords, and you work, uh, and, you know, you live in the nations provided by the nobility and provided by the kings, doesn't that make you a hypocrite then? And this completely, you know, kind of rips the argument apart because it real it makes the capitalists realize capitalist in question that's propagating the argument and presenting the argument that this argument doesn't, you know, only need to be applied to socialism. It can work anywhere else. And if they were to deny that, um, you know, if they were to deny that, you know, they would tell a peasant living under feudalism, something like that, then their, their argument is completely inconsistent. And yeah, that would pretty much wrap up the video, wrap up the subject. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you.